still works. I haven't let the praise team know yet, but I'm, I'm working on a series of songs that we're going to have, amen, on a Sunday called Back, Back to the Old Landmark. Singing them old songs where you stomp your hand and, amen, stomp your feet and clap your hands. Amen. I'm putting it together slowly but surely. Amen. Because this is, amen, our roots is out of the gospel, amen, singing songs that, amen, cause our hearts to burn more for God, amen. The, 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 the soul, amen, singing out to God, amen, because we still got rhythm. Thank God for praise and worship, but I, every now and then I got to go black. I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I, I was listening to a song today, amen, hallelujah. Amen. And that just took me back, amen, back to the 70s and the 80s, amen, when you would sing. And by the time you got finished singing, you done sung one song for about a half hour. Amen. Sweat everywhere. Come on, somebody. Amen. Tie around your neck. Amen. Folk in the floor. Come on, somebody. Amen. That old time gospel. Music for the glory of God. So today we're celebrating our Father's Day and I had some gifts, amen, all lined up, and, and, and they did not come in on time. So I got to take a snapshot of all the fathers that's in here so no extra fathers will come next week when I hand them out. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I've been on that side. <laughs> amen. So, amen. We're going to have a couple of the fathers, and I can't remember whether or not you, you told me you would be one of them or not. I can't, couldn't remember. But if you are, amen, just let me know, and we'll just add you right on in there. I don't have to preach every Sunday, but I want to preach today. But anyway, uh, we're going to have Brother Earl to come on up. Come on, you know it take you out nine hours to get up here, so I don't know why he's sitting there waiting for me to. So anyway, we're going to ask Brother Earl to come on up and share for a few moments, and then after that, amen, Deacon William Brown is going to follow him, amen, and Right after him, amen, Minister Mike is going to come. And right after him, my own, my own, my own, my own uh, son-in-law going to come up. Amen. James Staten going to come up and say a few words. Amen. He's like his mother-in-law. He take a, amen, trying to get teeth out of a bear. Amen. And then finally, amen, is going to be Minister Don Brown. And after him, amen, if time will allow, I'll come and begin to share, amen, the word that has been on my heart for today, but if not, if I don't get to it today, don't worry about it. You know, I'm not going to spend time putting a message together and not preach it. And so we'll, amen, come and preach it on next week if the Lord say so. So let's give these men of God a great hand clap and enjoy the word that will come from them. And don't preach for nine hours. Just remember somebody's coming behind you. Amen. God bless you. Well, happy Father's Day, gentlemen. Um, being a father is, is sometimes it's a hard job. You know, I didn't understand when I was growing up, I would never see my dad in the morning time. When I would get up, he was already gone. 1976, October the 11th, I understood what that meant. That was my second day in the Army. When that drill sergeant walked in at 4 o'clock and said, y'all need to be out of bed in an hour, and y'all in 99 minutes is gone, y'all late. <laughs> when I stepped outside at Fort Hill, Oklahoma, it was dark. When we got done that evening, it was dark. So I understand what my daddy was going through when he would leave the house that time in the morning. I never got to see my dad. But being in the, my, my experience was being in the military with my children. And, I, and I, I think I told you all before, I got three. And I, I thank God, um, last month, I went down to see my children in Arizona. And I got to see all my children, then from the oldest to the littlest. Because the oldest is the daughter, and the littlest is her baby. And I was watching her run around in the house, and, and I just sat there. And I, I, it, it was mind-boggling to me. And um, their mom was sitting there. She said, why are you looking at like that? I said, I never thought I'd be a grandfather. And she said, why? I said, because you got to look at it. In 2000, the year 2000, I collapsed from a heart attack. They did open heart surgery that afternoon. 
by midnight, I lay dead in the VA hospital in Seattle, Washington. So to see my children growing up and coming along like that, um, I never thought I was, I would see those days like that. And then I was looking at my granddaughter, she went up down the aisle, and, and while she's went up down the aisle I was at the house, I was looking at her, and I said, oh my goodness, I said, that's my granddaughter. And, and but I thank God I got to meet my, my son, he got married. He brought his wife down, and she brought her daughter down. So I got to meet all of them. And then I used to would say I got four grandchildren. So now I have to learn to put Jasmine in the equation and say now I have five. And see, that sounds good to y'all, right? I'm the one they be asking for to buy the gifts. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoy being a father. When I, like my experience was in the military, and I'm going to sit down after this. My daughter was, out of the three, she was the one that was always being mischievous and always, you know, getting into stuff. And, and I think I told you all this once before. I, I remember one day I was, I was home, and I was in Germany, and I must have been real tired. So she decided she wanted to paint my fingernails <laughs> with a permanent magic marker. <laughs> and red meant to be exact. So I got up there. They called an alert. And I finally got myself again, looked at my fingers, and my fingers was red and everything, so I tried to wash them off. That permanent marker don't come off. <laughs> Ew, it fades. So my nails went from being red to being pink. So, so when I got to tech site, I kept my gloves on. And so it got to the point where I actually had to take off my gloves. When I took off my gloves, one of the young ladies, she said, McLean. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, if I didn't know you any better, she said, I'd be no Fred Sampson. I said, no, we ain't doing that here. <laughs> so, so she was looking at me, and she said, um, I said, girl, I said, my daughter did this. She said, yeah, right. And uh, so, then when I, so then when she did it, my platoon sergeant walks in. So he was standing there laughing at me. I'm good. So when he was laughing at me, he takes off his gloves. I had red hands. He took off his gloves. He had a red hand, he had a blue hand and a green hand. He got two girls. <laughs> they painted one hand blue and the other hand green, and he tried to get them off, and he had the same color I had. So, so it was, to being a father, it, sometimes it's hard. There's no books, but it's enjoyable. Yeah. And, and why y'all girls give us dads such a hard time? Good morning, <clears throat> and happy Father's Day to all the men. I thank God for allowing me to be a father of three and a grandfather of many. <laughs> it's a job that 365 days you got to be on. No vacation, no instruction, just something I love to do. And I was blessed to have three kids and see them all on graduate high school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Wow, that was, that, that was really quick there. He could have said, hey, it is hey, seat. <laughs> Real quick, I am just honored and privileged to be able to say I'm a father. And happy Father's Day. And the reason why I'm, I'm like this, you know, when you look at Mother's Day, everybody already know there's a ticker tape parade, red carpet, the flower shop is empty. No candles on the shelf. Everything is out. Restaurants even got a special for the for the mothers, everything. Father's Day, here come McDonald's, here come Burger King. <laughs> Two for one. <laughs> and you better not say nothing. <laughs> Hold the onions. But I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Rosa Parks. Whether I'm in the front of the bus or the back of the bus, I'm just glad to be on the bus. Just glad to be on the bus. And, and when you're a father, of course, like you said, there's no manual, there's no instruction book. But the same thing my mother, there's no manual, there's no instruction book. These things you have to learn day by day, step by step. And I, I've, I've learned that even with, with being a father, there are some steps you have to take that you really don't want to take. 
I remember my daughter when she was standing in Greensboro, and she called me to daddy, said, um, I had to ride back and forth to work with a co-worker. And I said, don't you have a car? What's wrong with the car? It won't start. And I said, Lord, have mercy. So being a father, being who I am, I felt hands tied because I couldn't put my hands on her. I was far away. But I said, you know what? That's my baby. I called my father-in-law up, and uh, he's a mechanic, and I told him what was going on. He said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to see about my baby. He said, well, uh, come get me. Now, mind you now, I just got out of work. He stays in Robertsonville, North Carolina, which is a good 35, 40 minutes, 45 minutes away. So I had to get up, go all the way to Robertsonville, pick him up, turn around, get back on 64 Highway, and go all the way to Greensboro, North Carolina. I was there all day long making sure that car started. Took it for a ride, brought it back, parked it, made sure she go out, take it out, ride, make sure everything all right, come back. Then get on the road, stop, got something to eat, and came on back, drive him back to Robertsonville, and then get back home and get myself ready for work. Those things that deadbeat fathers miss. The memories. And I'm telling you this, and I'm done. Fathers, whether you in here this building, on Facebook, or whatever social media you are, take time out to honor yourself. Honor yourself. Stop beating yourself up. Honor yourself. Take yourself out. Go get yourself something and realize, sit down and look at it and critique yourself and realize, I'm a good father. <laughs> look at all you've done because... You may not have this like that father may have. You may not have that like that father may have. But there's no everything you've got, you don't mind giving it because that's your babies. So critique yourself, honor yourself. Don't let nobody belittle you because Mother's Day is, like, they deserve it. Feedback, they deserve it. Mothers deserve exactly what they get. But, do not belittle yourself. You've done a great job. You've done a wonderful job. Hang in there. Hold on. Keep going. Because trust me, when it's all said and done, when they come back, they may not do like the kids, on the, the football stars and basketball stars, when they get in front of the camera, hey, mom, hey, mom. Just know, without you, there'll be no hey, mom, hey, mom, I love you, mom. Because somebody had to get a seed. God bless you. May the Lord smile on you in my prayer. Good morning, everyone. You know, I, I debated this. Uh, Dad sent out the text uh, early in the week, and I debated and debated and debated, and I think I called him on Friday and said I'll speak. Um, <laughs> so, one, you know, yeah, my babies are here. My two babies are here. Momo. You know, my daughter left me a, a, a nice, nice note. Still like a kid writing in second grade handwriting. As uh, far as what I meant to her and as a father and, and, and everything. But people don't understand for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of things as far as being a father. One, you know, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my dad. Um, you know, I didn't have that father to look up to as far as growing up. I had my grandfather who was a, a, a person in my life that, that basically I do everything that I do based off of how I saw him live and be where he raised all his kids as far as grocery shopping, supplying, providing, working, just to, the stability. And then Mr. Mack, um, you know, who was my cousin that lived next door. And I just, everything that I have within me, I got from seeing them as far as how they conduct themselves every day. But just fatherhood is all I ever wanted to do in my life was make my mom proud of the man I became, which was be a good husband <laughs> and be a good father for as a person that I thought she would desire or want me to be. So every day of my life, that's what I strive towards as far as going to school to get an education, to be able to put myself in position to be successful to take care of the responsibility of having a family. And, you know, with my kids, you know, they left the house, now they back at the house, about to go again, but, you know. 
I done geared myself so much about sacrificing for my, my kids and my wife that I've always pretty much forgot about myself. A lot of folks say you lost a lot of weight. Yes, because I finally have taken time for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this week I got hit with air condition, refrigerator, you know, taxes. Every, every single thing hit me this past week reference to things to have to do. While everybody's still going on about their day, I'm sitting there focusing on I'm hot in my house. <laughs> what I need to do, what needs to be done, and just focusing and caring about other people. And, you know, if I didn't have my relationship with God, I would never have ever been able to deal with any of the things that I've, I deal with now. You know, and that takes me to my spiritual father. You know, I, I add Pastor Apostle into the equation in reference to all the encouragement, communication, teaching me, showing me what a, a man and a man of God is and how a man is supposed to be the head of his household and be the, 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 the leader, the spiritual leader, and just try to pour and encourage things uh, into me. So I just thank him for everything that he does for me in my life. Yeah. You know, the other, other night, I said with my son, you know, some days I just get emotional just thinking about where I come from and the life that I, I went through to get to where I am now and, you know, you know just living uh, recklessly at, at points. But I sat there with my son the other day and I looked at him and, and all I could see, I turned him around in the mirror, I said, look at, you, look at yourself, always hold your head up high, always remember who you are. You know, you are, you know, you are me. And everything I saw in him as far as my name, you know, continuing with him, it, it just means so much as far as the fact that I never, ever really wanted to go by my name. I never thought my name was good. I never thought my name was great. I thought my name was mud, you know, just based on everything I experienced. And, you know, and I've been dealing with land and land acquisitions and stuff with my mom for, for this past week or two. And we talked about my grandfather's land and what he actually left. And the one thing I said was, it's Bogues. You know, it's William Leon Bogues. He's a Bogues. So anything with my family, the homestead, it has to be in the Bogues name. Just because of the legacy he left and everything he's done for all of us. None of us would be here. Me, my cousins, my, you know, it's, it's a ton of us, a bunch of us, a lot of us. <laughs> but none of us would be here if we didn't get the foundation. And, I, and like I said, fatherhood go along with being a husband, being married. You know, five of my cousins are married. We married the three or four Duke fans, which sucks because we're Carolina. <laughs> but but we, all, we all are married black men that are trying to, you know, we married black men that are trying every day to do our best and raising our kids, being a good husband, you know, being a provider, being a supporter of everything that gets done. And, you know, a lot of times I always say, you know, man was out on his own home. You know, I always, that always hit me in the head. So why do I do it? Why does it get done? Why? Because I am not trying to, to appease or appeal to the people that's there. I'm trying to you know, do the work that God wants me to do. You know? And that's a hard task every day when you sit there and start asking yourself, why? Why do you continue to sacrifice? Why do you continue to struggle? Why do you continue to have these moments where you're frustrated and angry? You know, but that's all I know how to do. That's, that's what I believe I have to do. So whatever I got to go through to get to that point, I will always do that because as Dad said, God keeps good records, and I got to see him one day. So, so to, to all the men, happy Father's Day. You know, continue to realize that you appreciate it, and people see you and what you do and see your, your continued fight and your continued sacrifice, and it gives us the encouragement to continue to, to do the same thing. At the same time, I'd like to thank all the, the, the mothers and all the, the women in here just because, one, a smile 
a, a thank you, a, a, a compliment, whether it's one time that you go, sometimes those things regurgitate back in our brains to help us remember and see that somebody sees your sacrifice and your hard work. So thank you for all you do. Right? And to my, my babies, I'm getting out the way, I love to talk. <laughs> to, my, to my babies, it's been my greatest honor you know, to, to see you be who you are let me know that all the work I've done, all the work I've done is worth it. And I'm always going to be proud of you, even though y'all get on my nerves sometimes. But I love you. I wouldn't change nothing about my life. Somebody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I just want to wish all the fathers happy Father's Day here and abroad. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Oh, my goodness. A proud father of three, Nisha, DJ, and Ivy. Oh, my goodness. Being a dad is just so important to me because it brings me joy and happiness to hear my kids call me dad and my grandkids to call me Papa. <laughs> Being a dad is, is just so important and so many other dads take it for granted. But to be a dad, to see your, your kids look in your face and smile and come to you for advice and knowing that you can be there to help them along their journey, along their way, it's just so important to me because, you know, some people want kids and can't have them. You know, you never know how, how many people that may have committed suicide because they wanted to produce a seed but couldn't. So, you know, you can't take being a dad or father for granted because it is truly a blessing, a blessing from God. I used to say that I didn't want any kids when I was much younger. But God gave me a woman of God. <laughs> and I wanted some children then. <laughs> and I just thank God. I, I just thank God because one reason why I didn't want any kids was because I didn't want to have kids spread it all around. You know what I mean? That they don't know each other. I didn't want that. I wanted all my kids to be by one lady. One lady. I don't want a mixed up family, a broken home. I wanted to be in the home. Most of all, I wanted to be an example. The best that I possibly can be. So therefore, on Father's Day, I could not dare sit down and say nothing. You know, God has given all of us a gift. And being a mother and being a father is a gift from on high. You know, we, we think that we just got a job to do in the ministry. We just got a job to do outside the doors. But we got a job to do inside the home. Amen. And that is to do the best that we can to live this life. We can't control nobody. We can't make nobody do anything, but we can be an example and give them no excuse. As long as they keep their eyes on you and watching you, they have no excuse. But be patient. We got to be patient with children and kids because we once was one. And we did the things that they doing or could be doing now. So we got to have grace on them. And we have to continue to pray for them. Pray. And like the man of God said, we have to know that we, we're doing a good job. Even if the enemy try to make us feel like we're not, oh, we don't lay the foundation. And because things are going on and things might not look 
like we expect or want it to be, God is working this thing out. He's working it out. Me and dad was talking this morning. And we both agreed God is doing something. God is doing some things. And we have to know that we can't look at what we see, but we have to know what God is doing behind the scenes. That is a good father. That is a good dad. Because my kids know that they can call on me anytime. Anytime. And I'm there for them. I've always been there for them. But I don't tell them what they want to hear. I tell them what they need to hear. And I thank God for my spiritual dad. Because when I, came, when I first came to the ministry, I was 21, 22, something like that. But I'll be 52 this year, so. It's, it's, it's been a very long time. I was just a kid when I first came in the ministry, and I learned a lot. I ain't got everything right, but I've learned a lot. I just want to be honest because some people think that people are perfect. We're not perfect people. We just strive to be perfect continuously. <laughs> that means nonstop. That means continue to press forward. And that's what we all should be doing. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Don't sit on it. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say good morning. Happy Father's Day to everybody, and especially Happy Father's to our Father. I acknowledge everything was being said today, and it's like the Marine Corps. A few good men are still here, because if it wasn't life wouldn't be worth living. I say time and time again, God is good. I wish I would came in a long time ago, but thank God I'm here now. I thank God for my pastors, the one that provides spiritual leadership. I often talk to him after service, and my report is always the same, good job. <laughs> he can't help himself. It's coming from here, from here, there, and back. So we, the people, have a great deal of stuff to give. Show your attention. Your attention is more than money. We need money. But if this house, not your house, this house, we need certain things. And it shouldn't be on him all the time. I got one thing more to say. I always told a heat seed, but a few knows. And the knowing is where we should be. It's the honesty, integrity of every man and woman, boy and girl, to do your part before it's time. Last time I can say I lost a loved one a couple of months back, and it was so touching to me because I knew he supposed to be coming back. So I got sad for a few moments, went down to see him on the ventilator, but when I walked through, I know he was gone. And so my sister, we looked at each other. We said, well, we won't see him on this side. We'll see him on the other side. <laughs> and so that's why I said life is good, I say to everybody. Life to me is delicious. <laughs> I've had a stroke and everything, but thank God he brought this back. And now I got something to talk about. <laughs> Not about foolishness, but the word of God. Oh, 
I can, I can tell you a lot, but coming from my heart, not my mouth, it's real. And he's real. More than you can ever think. Because God is good. Let them all thank us for his grace and mercy. God bless you. Yes. Yes. Come on, let's praise God this morning. Amen. Some jewels and some nuggets. Amen. About fatherhood. Amen. I pray that somebody gleans something from it. And those that are watching us on Facebook, I pray that, amen, there's some fathers out here who may not be doing their part, standing up to the plate, being responsible. Anyone can, amen, uh, create a life, but carrying out the mandate of fatherhood requires, amen, responsibility. Amen. And knowing the importance that you're grooming the next generation. Amen. Come on, let's give these great men of God a great hand clap. I'm not going to be before you long because I want to go and amen and look at the ocean this day. Amen. And so I want to just say to all you fathers, amen, as always, so proud to have men of God here at God of Deliverance. Amen. Come on, let's give these great men. Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be able to be amongst them. Amen. And to say, God, I thank you for this great opportunity to stand before such a great cloud of witnesses. Amen. And so in the opening of my story on today, I want to talk about a story about, amen, the husband store. The husband store, which is, you know, uh, when there was a woman that decided that she wanted to Amen. Go and look at this particular store called the husband's store. But there was some particulars pertaining to the husband's store. If you go on a certain floor, you were not allowed. If you went to the first floor and then you went to the next floor, you can't go back down to the first floor. Are you with me? So when, she, when the lady decided to go to the first floor, she noticed that these men had jobs. Amen. The woman said, wow, a man with a job. Some of these women today are taking care of men and that's out of order. Amen. That would be really good. She said, man, this, it's really good that he, he's got a job. So she said, well, you know, I'm kind of curious. So let me go to the second floor. So she goes to the second floor and the, the sign read, these men have jobs and they love kids. Oh, man, she got excited. Amen. Somebody clapped. Amen. And got excited about it and said, these men have jobs. And my God. But something inside of her compelled her to be curious about the third floor. And so she said, well, let me go to the third floor. So she went up to the third floor and the sign said, these men have jobs. They love kids and they are extremely good looking. Y'all ain't going to laugh with me today. Y'all serious about Father's Day. But irregardless of all the good news she saw in this, something inside of her said, wait a minute now, if this is good on this third floor, let me go and see what the fourth floor says. So she goes up to the fourth floor, and on the fourth floor it says, the men have jobs, they love kids, they drop, they drop go looking gorgeous, and they help with homework or housework, housework. Now, I, I, I thought the women would say, yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Some say they amen. If the man want to turn the woman on, grab a vacuum cleaner. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and so, amen, with all of these great requirements and, and qualities, she said, wow, I, I, I can't hardly stand it, but, you know, there's a fifth floor. Let me, let, I just got to go and check this fifth floor out. So she goes up to the fifth floor, and the sign said on the fifth floor that the men have jobs, they love kids, they're drop dead gorgeous, they help with homework, and guess what? They got a strong romantic streak. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, she's looking up my, Brother Don back there holding up his hand like this here. Amen. But, 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 but she, she got so excited. She said, listen here. My God, if all of this is so good, I, I, I just 
got to go to the sixth floor. So she decides to go up to the sixth floor and the sign said, 31,556 and 12 people have visited this floor. On this floor, there's no men. <laughs> this, this floor is solely for the example of showing how impossible it is to please women. <laughs> But, but however, however, listen now, however, amen, the man that built this here um, six-story building for the husband's store said he didn't want to get into a gender bias situation. So what he did was he went on and built a woman's store. All right now. So he goes and he builds a woman's store, amen, and the same rules apply. Uh, they built the wife's store. So the same rules apply. If you go on the first floor and then you decide to go to the next floor, you can't come back down to the previous floor. So anyway, the man goes in and the sign said on the first floor, amen, the floor has wives that love to have sex. So the man, amen, got excited. And my God, so he's just like the woman. He said, amen, I, I just want to see what the next floor says. So he goes, amen, to the second floor, and the sign says, this floor has wives that love sex, and they have money. And just like this man over here said, he said, well, wait a minute now, I'm done. Because you know what? The floor from three to six, no man has ever gotten that far. <laughs> See, it's not hard to please a man. Women don't understand that you have the power to change the destiny in the course of a man's life. That's how easy it is. I wish I could talk to somebody that's listening. You fail to realize that you have such a power that you can make a man become anything. Some of y'all looking at me, oh, you don't know what he's talking about. I know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Huh? What's the comedian name? The light skinned brother? He, hey Amen. He's a Christian comedian. He doesn't cuss. Huh? Sinbad. Yes, Sinbad said, hey Amen, that his mother knew how to work her dad. His dad said she could get him to do anything. Make him lift up a building. Huh? Yeah, listening to me? I, I'm not preaching today. Do you, so, so, so we see here, she, he said, the reason his mother knew how to work him because she'll tell him to do something, and then she said, baby, you're doing such a good job. And she said, do you want some lemonade? And then he'll get some lemonade. And he'll... <laughs> but see, we think standing against a man Running our mouth to the man going to make the man do what we want done. But we fail to understand that God has gifted you women with a powerful source of influence. And, but we, if you don't know no better, you can't do no better. So give God a hand clap and I'm going to take about 15 minutes to share this word and I want a woman to look at another woman and say, are you the exception to the rule? Come on, look at another woman and ask her, are you the exception to the rule? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. And I reasoned like a child. Huh? And then it says, and now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and put them aside. The problem that we have faced so many in our lives is that we made adult situation while we were still childish. We got in relationships that we weren't even prepared for because we were still in a childish state. 
And see, anytime you're trying to live life ahead of the time clock of your maturity, you run into problems. Come on now. We had no understanding of what a woman was created for. Come on, men. Uh -huh. Nor did we have, amen, what it took, amen, to make relationships really last. Why? Because we were, a select, we were selecting by fl fl fleshly uh, decisions. Huh? Why do you think the media today is pushing young girls to take their clothes off? Because it's not about the wisdom of her mind. It's her body that is trying to attract you. Amen. And she can't even cook hot water. Y'all ain't going to talk to me now. And, and, and I hate that our young girls are falling into, amen, this, this mindset that the media has put into their minds that the tighter it is, the better it is. But I only know that dogs like bones. But anyway, let me get off of that anyway. The thing is, is that the media is shaping the mind and the character of our people. Uh -huh. We're no longer looking at the Bible as the guideline of how a woman ought to pre prepare herself to receive a real man of God. And in our childish state, come on now, in the childish state, you look for what pleases your flesh. I heard a teacher says, amen, he said, uh, if you, um, why do you love me? And he said, oh, because you got a nice shape. But see, the problem is that when that shape change, then your relationship is now going to be in jeopardy because what you love has disappeared. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We got to get into a mindset that we love like God loves us because I just love you, not a because. I wish... When I met my wife, she was 99 pounds, and guess what? I was 127. Neither one of us looked like what we were when we met. Our love didn't disappear because the body changed. I wish I could talk to somebody. I'm talking about fatherhood right now, but we're making adult situations, and we're not even prepared for the onslaught or the consequences of making decisions while we're still childish. Anybody listening? Listen to what it says here, amen. So when we understand the purpose, we ensure our success. Did you hear what Minister Don said? I didn't want any children until I met the woman of God. In other words, they still hadn't got to that state of maturity, but they had goals in mind. I would get deeper in the story because my God daughter told my dad, I got a, I, I got a plan. I said, yeah, you got a plan, all right, a plan to fail. But there's some unnecessary, listen to me carefully now, I'm talking to somebody, it, there's some unnecessary things we deal with and go through because we're making decisions that we don't even know how to accomplish. Anybody going to talk to me? So here as a direct result, listen to me, as a direct result, understanding purpose, look at a woman and say, you got to understand purpose. Look at the man and say, you got to understand the purpose too. Listen to what Genesis 2 and 18 says. The Bible says, now the Lord said, it is not good, sufficient, satisfactory that a man should be alone. I can just imagine Adam walking around seeing the population of the animal kingdom multiplying. And saying to himself, I, I feel like I want a family too. I feel like I don't want to be by myself. As they began to keep increasing, then seeing the little animals run around and honor the father, honor the mother, there was something inside of him that now a void had developed. Are you listening to me? When God decided to create a woman, he wasn't creating a woman just for them to fellowship alone. He had a man in his mind that I want to create heaven on earth. I want a family, a man that will honor me and serve me so I can use them in creation. But because of our childish mind, we want to do it a different way. 
And that's why we have so many broken homes, failured relationships, and distant fathers. God made the woman, as I continue to read this verse, it is not good, sufficient, or satisfactory that a man should be alone. I will make him a what? I will make him a what? Suitable, adapted, and complementary for what? For what? See, society has now twisted it to make the woman feel she's the object and the purpose. And as a direct result, it creates warfare. I'm not going to get a whole lot of amens from this point forward. I'm, so you need to holler at me. Okay? Society has now twisted the tables and made women to feel that the man was created for them. I wish I could get some women to say, Pastor, preach, Pastor. <laughs> What's that glue they call monster glue? They ain't saying to it. Gorilla glue, yeah, gorilla glue. They ain't saying nothing. And so, because society is so powerful, let, let me tell you something. This unisex, these problems we're facing, they didn't happen overnight. The enemy slowly over time has caused a shift in the thinking of our lives. Women, amen, now feel like, let me, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a quick revelation. Turn the TV on and watch a superhero movie. You'll find it's the women now. They punching a the man and the man just falling all out. No, you ain't got that kind of power. Huh? Men having trans, uh, turning into transgenders want to now go into the women's arena and they're beating them to death. Now they want to change the laws again. The Bible says men thinking themselves to be wise, they become a fool. And generally speaking, there's no woman that's going to be beating a man at all. You're not designed for it. But yet society says, well, I feel. See, childish. Let me move on because that's a sermon all by itself. Understanding, what did I say? Understanding purpose ensures success. Say it with me. Understanding purpose ensures success. When we find our place, see, what did man talk about? Find my, find my what? <laughs> if he don't know, he better ask somebody. Y'all gonna talk to me. Majority of a woman will see something like that and say, that's why I don't believe what the Bible has to say. Because ain't no, no man going to tell me what to. You know, the women responded to that. <laughs> but to understand your purpose Woman, if you understand your purpose, we can have a happy Father's Day. God, listen, God made the woman not only for the, for the man, but for the purpose of creating family. And the two of them, amen, were to be able to mirror heaven on earth. So, for the man to become a good father, listen to me carefully now, for a man to become a good father, he must, the woman must fulfill the purpose of her design. Anybody going to hear what I'm saying? Let me, can I read that one more time? Huh? So for a man to become a good father, he must have a woman that can fulfill the purpose of her design, which was what? 
to compliment him. Oh, I had up in here. Which is what? To adapt, to be suitable and complementary to the man. Failure to do this causes what? A malfunction in the development of the man's ability to fulfill God's purpose. Don't be looking at me like that, woman. The man is over there sitting, I ain't going to say nothing, but I didn't get into trouble. <laughs> See, on Father's Day, I can talk like this and not, the bombshells ain't hitting us all. But to not understand your purpose, I'm talking, listen, I'm not talking but to the carnal woman. I'm talking to the women that say, I love God. That's, those are the women I'm talking to. Even out there on Facebook, I ain't talking to these, what's this, this, this new realm they got with the women, the women's movement and all. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to women who are trying to get the mind of God. I'm talking to women that understand their design and purpose. I'm talking to women that ain't trying to compete with a man and try to stand up to a man and try to be a man. That's why they're creating all these toys. Because the, let me get back up. I was looking at this TikTok thing, and this girl going to get up all in this man's face, selling them all and all, and all of a sudden he knocked up on the stool. When she got up, she went and walked to mind her business. But it ought not to, a man ought not to never put his hands on a woman because he already know he can whoop her. But because of this mindset that the, the, the culture has given women an empowerment to act foolish in front of a man, to act silly in front of a man, and then when the man explodes, the very th first thing, they want to throw him in jail. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Come on. To be able. Where's my brother? Hey. To be able. Just throw it up. I used to be able to catch. But anyway. That's because I'm ducking all these bullets that's coming up here from the women. Y'all can't see it, but I can so you you got to understand, listen, i got about 10 more minutes. Listen, salvation, and listen, salvation removes the blindness from off of our eyes. Huh? Because what? And now God helps the man to understand the need for a Proverbs woman. I want the women in here to look around and ask three women, are you a Proverbs woman? All ain't got no power in that at all. Why did I say are you a Proverbs woman? Because until you are a Proverbs woman, the man can't really declare himself to be fully made because he can't be complete without that woman. Is anybody going to talk to me? And see, the thing is, you got to be an exceptional woman. Uh-oh. Well, Pastor, this is supposed to be Father's Day. Why are you putting the pressure on the women? Because we can't become what we need. Why are you fighting us? Let me say that again. That felt, that felt kind of good. We can't become what we need to become. Why, we, why are you fighting us? Listen to this. The Bible's right. Come on, tell you something. The Bible's right. See, for the man to be the father, listen, to become a father that God has declared for him to be, a woman has to be an exceptional woman because you got a great fight. Come on, look at another woman and tell her, you got a great fight now. You know when them hormones get to acting up, attitude gets to getting in place, amen, standing up, telling that man, well, this is the way it's going to be. Whether you... You don't know your design. Can I ask a question? Listen, can I ask a question? And I'm asking it from an earthly understanding like Jesus do. He would always use parables. But I want to ask a question for any of you all that ever been in a workplace. Have you ever had an apprentice tell the master how to do something? The apprentice's job is to do what? To assist. Anybody going to talk to me? To assist the one in whom he's working with. 
Now, that doesn't mean that the man knows everything. You can still give, like, your input, but when it really boils down to making the decision, the master builder makes the plan. But our society has warped the mind of our women, keeping them as the daughters of Eve rather than the daughters of Sarah. What are you talking about, preacher? Eve walked out with a curse on her life. We're going to get to it. You ready to reach, read it right now? Come on, let me hear the women say, yeah, read it, Pastor. Yeah. That wasn't 100% participation, you know. <laughs> Genesis 3.16 says it this way. Then God said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy. Why? Because you didn't listen to your husband. Not only that, and in pain, you will give birth. Now, that, that's, that made me pause for a moment. You know why it made me pause? Because God was saying here, had you listened, you could have babies and you wouldn't feel pain. Anybody going to talk to me? It was because of the disobedience that pain had to come into play. Other than that, it would have been a... Well, Popping them out left and right. Come on, honey, let's make another one. Well, that was good. Now we got to have intercession. Listen to what it says now. <laughs> Listen to what it says. You're going to have pain in your childbirth. Then he says, and you will do what? Come on, women, talk to me. You will do what? To do what? To do what? Some of y'all. Come on, you were talking clear before. What you say? Desire to control your husband. Now, if you're controlling your husband, that means you're flowing, amen, in disobedience and walking in line with the curse. Well, he don't know as much as me. God didn't ask you about what you know. Because he know more than anybody anyway. See, it's all, listen, let me tell you something. What God told me this week as I was riding down the road. He said, son, he said, let me tell you something. Your submission has to become greater than your wisdom. Because your wisdom will talk you out of obeying me. See, we don't want to hear that. We want to believe that we know more than what God says, and as a direct result of knowing more than what God says, we ain't got to obey God. Tighten here now. We better get back up here and sing about the blood again. <laughs> listen to this now. Listen, listen. See, because you can't see the reality. You can see the reality of all this in our culture. Our culture is give, gearing us to war against each other. Now, there's abuse everywhere. No woman ought to be a, a slave to no man. Yeah. Women clapping now, sir. But see, it all depends on how you processing this. If you serving your husband with a slave mentality, you can't stand it. But if you're serving your husband because God said do it and do it in love for me, guess what? There ain't going to be no problem. You know why? Because you're doing what your father has said. Look at, your, look at another woman and say, you got to be exceptional in this. You got to be exceptional. Because see, the, 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 the culture today is not teaching none of this. Child, you ain't got to take this. And most of them that tell you that ain't married. They going home hugging a pillow. And you sitting there like they the wisdom of the world. <laughs> huh? Huh? Man, woman, you don't need no man. You go to their house. Uh-oh, you don't know what you're going to find. Preacher was looking for a wife. This real story. Preacher was looking for a wife. So he had one of the women that had been in his church a long time, amen, because he, he saw one that he might have been kind of interested in and said, I want you to go and ask her a question. 
He said, well, what is the question? She said, what is the question, Pastor? I want you to go and ask her, when the last time she had sex? And the woman, they got in the conversation because they were like that, you know? Got in the conversation. She said, child, I don't know. I, the last time I, about three months ago, that ended that. Because she wasn't married. So how you having sex and you ain't married? And he was looking for a wife. She missed a man of God because she had a temporary fix. I'm preaching better than y'all looking at me. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Huh? Tell me, I'm looking for a man of God. But in the meanwhile, listen, what it, listen, can't you see the reality of this? As you see an increase in divorce because of the unwillingness to submit to God's purpose and design. The spirit of rebellion is witchcraft. Anybody going to talk to me? Huh? When you can't listen to the authority that's above you that God has appointed, you are operating in the spirit of witchcraft. And just like all people who are under the spell, they can't see it, nor do they believe it, and they are resistant. Why you think, I want to ask you a question. Why do transgenders and these folks that got these strange behaviors are targeting children? Why are they targeting children? Mm, something that Arsenio Hall would say, things that make you say, hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, we got to understand the tactic of the devil. See, when you understand the tactic of the devil, you won't be so easily deceived. Satan don't want you listening to the upper. Your boss can tell you what time to be to work, and you ain't going to say nothing but be there. Your husband tell you, I need just some eggs and bacon. You get it for yourself. I work just like you. I'm glad y'all smiling. I don't know if you're smiling or snarling. Which one are you doing? Huh? Listen, am I in the book? See, if I wasn't in the book, see, I, I, you, could, you could look at me ugly and all of that. But when I'm agreeing with the word of God, only the women who serve in God and love God will hear it and not make an excuse. Oh, well, you know, he ain't saved. God did not, I didn't see God say anything about him, but we won't get to him. Is that all right? Listen to what it says here. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, I think that's where I'm at. Is that where I'm at? Yeah. But the natural mind, the non-spiritual man or woman, does not accept or welcome or admit in his heart the gifts and teachings and the revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly, meaning what? Meaningless nonsense to him or her. He is incapable of knowing them and progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. The Bible says you do always resist the Holy Ghost. How many women enjoying this? Let me see your hands. Okay. I'm waiting for my wife's hand to go up. <laughs> it's going to go up later. <laughs> I, thank, I thank God for my wife. We couldn't last this long had she not had stick to I, I I wasn't always a good guy. And sometimes even now I get on her nerves. And I, you know I can tell when I get on the nerve? Jesus, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. And I be saying like, okay, what are we praying about now? <laughs> Stop hitting your husband. He, we just honored him today. <laughs> Listen, let me, as I get ready to close. Listen to this. I'm teaching on Father's Day. It's Happy Father's Day. If there's a real woman of God in here today, the greatest gift you can give is obey God and help that man become the man of God. It's not telling him what to do. Come on now, wait a minute. It's not telling him what to do because God got to do that. Your job is to be all you can be to convince him that God is in the mix. 
I got scripture to back me up. Those are the men clapping back there. But anyway, listen to this here. Listen, listen. The Proverbs woman, listen to this. Listen to what it says. Proverbs 18, 22. He who finds a true wife, not a girl. I'm getting ready to say it the wrong way. <laughs> not a sex object, but a true wife finds a good thing, obtains favor from the Lord. This is an exceptional woman. This ain't a woman you find on the corner talking about. No, you don't find, no, no, you ain't going to find that virtuous woman in that. You ain't going to find a virtuous woman with half her stuff hanging out. No, you ain't going to find a virtuous woman like that. A virtuous woman is covered up because she wants to show you everything when you get married. You ought to learn sex together from your youth. Not you coming there with master degrees. Let me teach you a thing or two. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> I'm making my own self laugh now. You got a master's degree and you 12 years old. Come on now. This requires, come on, somebody say it with me. This requires an exceptional woman. She de, she's designed, now listen to this now. This is going to get you. I got five more minutes. She's designed to be the expression of God's love to the man. See, God was spirit. And as, as Adam walked in the garden and seen how the animals were reacting to one another, he felt the absence of a touch. He felt the absence of companionship. So everything that God had in him for Adam, he put in the woman so the woman could touch him. Huh? That Adam would be able to be touched by the love of God. And understanding that a man is created in the image of God, but the woman of God represents the emotions of God. Every time a woman that's married touches a, her man, he should be able to sense God is in the touch. Only minutes to get this settled now. <laughs> touch me, baby. Some, some of y'all are so stiff because I'm talking to you. Is y'all all right? Breathe in, breathe out. Come on, breathe in. Touch me, baby. You be home. Tell me, cause she's touching you with such love. Touch me, baby. Huh? And the more she keep touching, the more she's he's saying to himself, "I done found a good thing." <laughs> don't be all stiff. You don't watch movie. Come on now. Don't be trying to act like you ain't been there. Huh? But that's what it was. The man was created in the image of God and the woman was created with the emotions of God and together they bring the totality of God. Come on, give God a hand clap there. Let me close. Just her conversation. I never forget when I first saw my wife. She didn't have to say a word. I just looked into her eyes. It was slain. I looked for her for three months. Couldn't find her. Not because of her hips and not because of her tips. It was because of her eyes. Don't tell me that God can't put you in something and allow that man to be swayed and overcome by you. Come on, you are. Uh, one woman say to another woman, He's talking about me because I'm exceptional. <laughs> Listen to what it says here in 1 Peter 3 and 1. I'm, I got these two more scriptures and I'm going to get out your way. 1 Peter 3 and 1 says this. In like manner, you married women. Who, what, what kind of women? Yeah. Not shacking women. He ain't talking to you. Shacking women are still operating in childishness. 
Because you let that man use you all up, and then if he decides to walk away from you, you all used up. Huh? Some women in their 40s talking about, well, you know, child, I'm just a cougar. No, you used. <laughs> you trying to compete with a 24-year-old. You done lost your mind. Call you Sister Elastic. to say how important it is to go on and get married. I don't minimize marriage. Marriage ought to be the most desired thing if you're starting to want to have relationship. You hear what I'm saying? Call you Elastic Girl. And I ain't talking about that movie either. Listen to this. It says here, you married women be, what what is that word? Can y'all, can, who? No, is is that a real word? Who uses that? Be submissive to your own husband. Subordinate. Subordinate yourself as what? Being set to the devil. God is saying it in his word, but you'll call it the devil. Listen to what it says now. It says, being secondary to, to and dependent on them. And adapt yourselves to them so that even if any do not obey the word of God, you blast them out. You close up shop. You get mad. Tell them to get out. No, that's not what this is saying. It says they may be won by over, not by discussion. Well, we just need to talk. Have any of y'all, don't, don't y'all raise your hand. Any of y'all men ever had that kind of, it, we need to talk. Now, you know ain't nothing good coming out of this, but you go anyway. Mother, mother's over there falling over. Brother Quick, we know what you feel like now. That's why God, that's why God honored you today. But anyway, <laughs> listen now, listen, listen, listen. It's to, see, I'm not ta- listen, I am not talking to ordinary women. I'm talking to exceptional women. I'm talking to women that are born again and have the heart of God. I'm talking to women that understand their design and purpose in their life for the man. I'm talking to them. Those that are standing stiff and giving me looks and acting like, ooh. I ain't talking to you. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Go on and sing. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to women who are trying to make their relationship mirror the purpose of God. Listen to what it says here. Now it says, so that even if any do not obey the word of God, you may be, they may be won not by your discussion, but by godly lives of their wives. It's not working, amen. So we decide, God, I done prayed, I done fasted, ain't changed, I ain't doing it. Paul said, you have started off in the spirit and you now ending up in the flesh. He's in one room, you in the other. Mother falling out over there. Listen, listen, listen what verse 2 says. I'm just about done. I can hear in the spirit. Thank God. Listen to this. Verse 3 says, when they observe, listen, when they observe, see, when a, a, a man who has left foolishness, who has now got the heart of God, because Paul said, what I'd done previously, I'd done in my ignorance. I didn't know no better. He said, but now that I have become a man, now that the blinders have been taken off, now that the devil can't blind me anymore, I see the kind of woman that a man needs. And so he says here, uh, when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves together with your reverence for your husband, your what? Your, your reverence, your respect, Amen. And honor for your husband. You are to feel for him. All that reverence includes is to respect, defer to, reverence, reverse, revere him, to honor, esteem, appreciate, prize, and in human sense to adore him. That is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your what? I know I ain't getting through because none of y'all ain't writing no notes. Nah. Can I say this? And I, I'm just, I got one more verse and I'm done. You want to know a secret? Men were created in the image of God. Okay? Now, what does God love? 
He loves to be what? So now, if a, God loves to be praised, and he, when he created that man, he created himself, what does that man need? See, a, a, an affair don't come out of a, 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 a wife not having sex. An affair comes out of a man not receiving praise. Because you magnify his fault. You magnify his shortcomings. You magnify his mistakes. But you definitely don't honor him like God wants you to honor him. And so as a direct result, he goes to the water cooler because he's dry. I'm trying to listen to what Mother's saying there. He, he goes to the water cooler because he's dry. But guess what's sitting there waiting to moisture him with a lot of praise? Huh? Mm, what, is, what is that you got on? He ain't washed in two days, but, you know. <laughs> see, see, you got to be careful of the praise you get now. He know he ain't washed. He don't even say a soap. He said, I don't even know what it is. And she'll say, well, that, that smells mighty good. You know what she didn't do? She didn't magnify his fault. He smelled like he came out of a locker. She, baby, you smell good. What is, I want to buy that for, for, for a friend of mine. What is the name of that? <laughs> Don't wash. Huh? And guess what? Every time he gets dry, he goes to the water fountain. After a while, it leads to a conversation. After that conversation, something starts rising. And it's no longer about the water. Y'all ain't going to listen to me, but I'll go and close it out. Listen to this now. Let me read this last verse, Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find this exceptional woman, this virtual and capable woman, capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband trusts in her. And she will greatly what? She'll do what? Enrich his life. Because enriching his life, you'll enrich your life. But see, our society has made it so that you think you can enrich your life. I don't care about how many degrees you got. You can have degrees and still be poor. You can get all the degrees and have all the money and still be unhappy because you're not fulfilling the design in which you were created for and that was to enrich that man so that it'll come around and enrich your life. Yeah. Give God a hand clap. I'm coming in. You want this kind. She'll bring him good, not harm, all the days of his life. This is the kind of woman, I think I made this slide up. Let me see if that's the last slide. This is the kind of woman causes a man or a father to have a happy Father's Day. Come on, give God a <laughs> Just by saying to the fathers, happy Father's Day, is not really a whole lot. But to honor that man and respect that man and to thank him for raising your children when he could have been like any other ordinary man and left you husbandless, left you warring with all your children by yourself. He stood and stayed. And he continued to believe that God called him to be responsible to take care of his daughter which is you. You have a man that wants to fight the temptations that tries to draw him out the pocket. And some women are not helping their man to stay home. Now, did it, just because of what all you heard today, I, not once did you tell, hear me say that the man was right. You just heard me teach the principles of the word of God. But your chase conversation. 
your behavior and character, the softness of your words, full of respect and honor, will get you more than you can ever imagine. If only you would believe. I pray as I'm talking to someone out here today, you might be in a relationship that's all toe up from the flow up. You might be, amen, shacking and giving up your life for no reason at all. If you're here watching this broadcast today, I hope that you will take heed to what God has tried to share, even in your dilemma. And let me tell you something. Don't feel guilty. We've all made mistakes. Thank God for good information. Because the more you hear it, the better you're going to respond. Don't feel guilty at all if you had babies out of wedlock. God is not in the guilt business. He's in the healing business. Huh? He said, I did not come for the righteous. He said, I come for the unrighteous. And guess what? When he comes and you let him in, he'll take all that the enemy and the canker worm and the caterpillar has robbed you of and restore you once again. If you're not saved and you heard this word, Father, say, Father, come into my heart. Save me right where I am right now. I heard the word and it has pricked my heart. I want to be a woman of God. I want to be a man of God. And today I come just like I am. I am so unprepared, Father. But God, lead me to a church that will teach me the will and purpose of your kingdom. And God, as I yield myself, continue to be the Lord in my life. If you meant that prayer, I want you to know you're saved right where you are. Find your church preaching the word of God and enjoy your journey with Christ. Give God a hand clap as we go off the air. Well, let's give these fathers.